Hi, uh, welcome everybody to this um, composite webinar on Yotscan uh, modern scantling software. My name is Lorenzo Bossi. I'm the sales and marketing manager here in Composite, and I'm joined today by John Evans, our application engineers, otherwise known as the voice of Composite. Uh, for those of you who attended our previous tutorials. Hi everyone. Uh, just before we start, uh, let's have a look at what we are aiming to achieve today. So, our objectives for um, today's session is to introduce you to Composite. Uh, if this is the first time you have a look at what we do and what we have to offer, uh, then provide an overview of Yotscant with uh, a more detailed level demonstration for um, sailboats. Uh, but also then illustrate the successful uses of Composite um, to deliver composite solution based on um, some typical examples of marine projects. So in terms of the agenda, we'll, uh, as mentioned, introduce Composite and provide an overview to Yotscant. During the live demonstration, which is really the core of today's webinar, we'll be looking at the uh, definition of uh, vessel topology. Um, it can be a motorboat or a sailboat. Uh, we'll be looking at material selection and laminate design, um, beam panels and reinforcements alongside with the automated uh, reporting and uh, scantling report capabilities uh, that we are offering in our, um, in our solution. Uh, we'll be then be concluding with the availability of uh, Composite and Yotscant, um, how you can actually uh, evaluate them by yourself or, or even subscribe to the solution. And we'll terminate with a question and answer session. Uh, you can type questions at any time on the right hand side of your screen uh, into the question panel, so please do not hesitate to um, type those as we progress. Uh, that will give us time to prepare the question and answers. So Composite, um, we just wanted to have a look at uh, what can be done um, when we are starting designing. Um, so we're starting from the sketch and uh, we want to go down to the final detailed um, product design. Just a few slides of introduction to Composite. First of all, um, I would like to say this is really a composite focused uh, platform. It contains a number of elements from materials, database management, and plies, um, laminate design, section and 3D detail design and FEA, um, alongside with dedicated automatic reporting features for uh, laminates, sections, below material, and scantling report, as we'll see um, later on in the webinar. Um, Composite is a web-based software as you know, probably your, your, your emails or your Salesforce CRMs and so on. And it allows us to basically support you with uh, centralized data management uh, where you can keep all your projects, um, all your materials, data, all your laminates into a single um, secure place. The design philosophy that we have implemented in, uh, in Composite and in Yoscan follows the agile design workflows. Uh, that means that we are able to pass data um, upstream and downstream of our design processes. Uh, realistically, what it means is we can actually be into a detailed design phase uh, by just going back to adding a new material or a new laminate and just being able to quickly import that into our new design uh, without having to repeat all the process. The automated documentation features, whether it's for a bill of material, uh, section or laminate report, or a discounting report, uh, were built because, by honestly speaking, doing reports is quite boring. Uh, it's a laborious task. It's time consuming. I'm sure uh, there's not many people today who actually enjoy doing that. And so um, that's what we wanted to have in Composite, an automated documentation engine. Um, able to share um, export reports to PDF, uh, create revisioning issues, and so on. Okay, so I will now let John take over. Thanks, Randy. Okay, so we're going to take now a look at um, Composite's capabilities and a quick 
quick overview of the environment and how it can be used within your marine projects. So composite can be used uh, from preliminary design to detailed design of beams, bulkheads. Uh, it can be used for advanced modeling for grillages, keel grillages, um, for engine, engine structures or uh, gussets, etc. It creates automatic, automatic bill of materials. Again, as Lorenzo said, creating reports is quite boring. Um, really speeding up the process of a project and getting that documentation out to the customer very quickly. And again, documented, documentation certification. So this is the composite environment. As you can see, we have a downstream design workflow and upstream modifications. We start from the left in project space. So this is where we define all of our project data, our safety factors, our bill of material settings, etc. We then move into CMDB, which is uh, where all of our materials are stored. Composite gives you a, a pretty large library of materials ready for you to use, or you can create materials as you go along or import your own materials that you have in your company. Then we create laminates. So in laminar space, we can create a stack up and use our advanced uh, classical laminate theory tools to really assess those laminates and the sandwich stabilities, all the engineering constants that you require. Section space is then next. Uh, we'll use this for 2D section analysis for beams or up to a, a midsection uh, of, a, of a hull, as we'll show later. Then we can use these sections in FE space. We can create grillages, 3D models. Uh, we can import step files to create shell models, um, basic panel analysis, you name it, FE space can do it. So yacht scan is what we're going to focus on today. This is where we bring in the certification requirements. So ISO and GL requirements, we can generate scandlings and really quickly get out um, a certification report and the reserve factors in included everything that you need for your, for your designs. Bong gen and report space are reporting tools. They're used to either automatically generate bill of materials or you can manually create materials or a bill of materials using this tool. And the report space is a versioning tool. So once you create your reports, your laminar space reports, your section space reports, your yet scan reports and your bomb gen reports, you can then create revisions and keep control of all of your reports. Okay, so let's jump into Composite. First, we'll go through a quick overview of, of the workflow that we're going to, to go through, and then we'll, we'll jump into the environment. So this is an automatic laminate table generation. Uh, when we jump into Composite, we have our project and project setup, product setup, sorry. This is where we set up our, our safety factors of material settings, as I said. Then we go to our inputs. So these will be generic inputs and we will define these for the whole project. So our material definition, which materials we're going to use, we can really select them and, and filter them into our projects. We then create a laminate with these materials, our stack ups, um, and then from this we can create a laminate family report. So this gives us our, our uh, mechanical properties of the laminate, the cost, the weights, etc. And then a very basic laminate family export. So different laminate family, different sub-laminates within a laminate family we can, we can show and then give this over to our shop floor. So let's jump into Composite. So this is our environment. You can see all the modules are laid out along the middle and along the side. We have our project navigator, which is where we store our projects. So each, each boat that we would do would be a different project and we can organize these in our project navigator. 
Okay, so CMDB, let's jump straight in here. You can see that I have my project materials, which I've dragged from a larger library. Um, I've got some unidirectional carbons, some woven carbons, and some biaxials, and a selection of foam cores. So these are from a material library. You can see that it's, it's fairly large. And I'll, this is our basic library, so this is giving you a good, a good head start into, into your design. Okay, so within our project materials, we can, uh, we can compare them directly. So if I choose a wave of carbon and a bias of carbon, we can calculate the properties based on their, their basic numbers, or we can normalize them against each other. We can also export, export these properties if you want to work with a spreadsheet also. Okay, so I've got my materials into project materials. I want to now create a stack up, so I will jump into laminar space. Okay, so you can see that I have a few laminates already. I have a bulkhead laminate, a deck laminate, and a hole laminate. So if we jump into, for example, our deck laminate, you can see that I have uh, my basic laminate, which is this XC400, another XC400, and a Woven 400. You can see that this is our basic DAC laminate because we've chosen to tick the certain plies that we need. You can also see that this is um, this is symmetrical laminate. So if I edit some of the plies on the top, this will be mirrored. So that's going to edit. And I'll show you live. So if I change this sequence type to total, I can just change one side of the skin. I can add plies where I want to, just by adding ply, for example, another wave in 200 at 45. Click add, and then I'll add it into the stack. And then if I want this to be in a different sublaminate, so this sublaminate is a more reinforced laminate, which would be for a, a certain area of patching. I can just select it and it will be added. So let's change it back to symmetric odd. This makes it a symmetrical laminate. Anything that I change up here will be mirrored in the bottom. Yeah, I can easily add a sublaminate. So if I have a reinforcement area too, Two. I can then select the plies that I need to. So for example, up to here, like so. And then this is a different area. I can apply this to either a different area in my FE model or in a section space model, wherever I, I need to. So let's save and close this. So what it's doing now is it's just calculating all the properties for each of these sub -laminates. And it will show me soon. Here we go. So I can see my generic data, my amount of plies, my weight, my reinforcement weight, costs, etc. I also have my laminate properties at the top here. I won't go into those, but it's quite, um, quite extensive. So let's say I have a supplier who wants to have a look at this laminate. I can do two things. I can create uh, a report which will outline all of my laminate properties and I can create a sub-laminate to Excel. So first let's create a report. So this has now taken us into a report space. So report template, laminate report, okay, report group, and I'll save this. This is now taking it into a, a template which we have defined. You can define your own templates as you need to, and it's automatically created a revision number. So you can see all the data that I need 
for this for this laminate. Okay. This can then be exported to HTML or a PDF to be shared with someone, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and print it out. So let's jump into laminate space again. So we have one more export to do. So this is the sub laminate of Excel. Uh, let's take the deck one, reinforcement. Sub laminate of Excel. So this will give me the stack up. And will show me any comments that I've added in and the generic data and the materials that have been used in this. So this could be very easily just transferred to the shop floor. Um, yeah. Okay. So you can see that this is a very easy workflow. We did a very simple step there, but um, it's quite a powerful tool to save you quite a lot of time. Okay, so the reason why you're all here. So scantling determination and investment certification. This is Yacht Scan for us. So we have our projects and products set up, which we've already done. Our topology import. So this is our structure for our boat. We'll show this later. So depending on whether you have a very defined structure for each project within your company, or you'd like to create a structure for each project, we give you templates which you can download, modify however you want to, and then import that structure in. We have our inputs. So we've already selected our materials. We've already created our laminates. Then we go into ge to geometry import. We can either create this manually or import it from Katia. This is then when we get our initial design results. These are based on ISO guidelines or GL guidelines. And then we have an optimization stage. So this is a very quick loop. Composite really allows you to, to make this optimization very efficient. So once we've changed maybe our laminates or our materials, this then automatically updates the data downstream, and then we get our final panel or beam results in your scans. This can then be created, uh, documentation should then be created, so this is bill of materials reports and yacht scan reports. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's jump into Composite again. So we've got our bulkhead laminate, we've got our deck laminate, and we've got a hull laminate with a hull bottom and a basic hull laminate with some tapes as well in, in here. So let's jump into Yacht Scan. So when we come into Yacht Scan, we can create a new vessel. So right click on products, create vessel. We can apply which rules we need, uh, the name of our boat, the designer, manufacturer, builder, and then we get our ISO or GL requirements. So craft type, um, all the basic inputs that, that you'd have in most, most ISO or GL spreadsheets for softwares. So we've done this already for another boat. We've called this SS Composite. So here you can see it's a very standard um, 60 foot boat. We have imported our topology. So this is a very, very detailed structure. We've got primary structure uh, and secondary structure into main components, bulkheads, beams, etc. Um, you can either go this detailed or you can create your own, um, your own topology. This is just one we've imported from our, from our company library. So we have a few panels here. You can see that they're passing uh, the guidelines. So let's create another panel. So we right click on, on the topology group and we can create a panel, a beam, uh, we can import it from Katia or create an FE model within that. So let's go ahead and create a panel. Okay, let's call this panel 4. Um, and position, so this is whole laminate, forward top sides, or forward bottom, sorry. So position. 
a hull laminate, so hull laminate, hull bottom. And we can edit this laminate straight from Yacht Scout, which is very quick. This would take us directly into laminate space to be able to change it. Click Save and it will bring you back into this window. So all these are pretty standard, um, standard figures. The nomenclature is on the right here. Um, I think you should all be very, very aware of these. So let's make this eight meters height, point five to two thousand, one thousand, two hundred thirty. Okay, so once we've got all that in, we can hit save, and then it will calculate the results and give us some reserve factors on the right up here. Okay, good, we're passing. So all of these are pretty generic to, to ISO or GL guidelines. We've added in a few which we think are quite useful, um, but you should be fairly similar with these, familiar with these. Okay. So let's save and close this. This is passing. We can, we can have a look at the loads that have been applied to the panel up here. So we've got our ISO design pressures, or gel design pressures, design loads, forces, bending moments, and other requirements, so stiffness requirements, fiber requirements, um, and weight of single skin requirements, if, if required. And then we have a more detailed look at the results. So this gives us a short description of, of where, where we're failing, if we're failing, and, and the, the requirement. Okay, so we can do a beam very similarly. We right click and create a beam inside. Let's call this um, top side beam. So it's an Let's go with the top hat reformer. You can see that we've got a nomenclature here. It's different orientation, longitudinal deck. Okay, so we've got, let's choose to analyze capping and inner and outer skin reinforcements. So it's going to be the same position almost. Okay, so we've got our beam position. We can put our beam geometry. So let's say 100 millimeters high. Our base width, let's go for uh, 100. And our top width of 80. Okay, so our capping, we can define our capping, number of plies. And then the material. This should come straight from straight from CMDB. Okay. So let's save and close this. Okay. I probably forgot to define the material first. Let's just uh, look down. Okay. Um, we can load another beam now, I think. Okay, let's have a look at another beam that we've done earlier. Okay, so I should have one in hull. You can see that when some of the components are not passing, you actually receive that notification straight from your um, tree view. Uh, for example, panel 5 in the half button. 
uh, as this red warning mark. Yeah. Okay, oh. so we can see that we've got our, our, our um, elements defined, our capping, our shear web, and our plating. So this is this is again from Lambda Space and CMDB. And then it, exactly the same as for a panel, it gives us our reserve factors. And then we can see our loads and, and more detailed results. So if we wanted to analyze this further in FE space, um, we can take these into FE space like this. Okay. So once we have our final panel results, let's say our boat is, is okay, it's all passing. We then need to create documentation. So we can do this in BombGen and report space. So let's create a bill of materials first. We can right click on the boat and we can generate a bomb, a bill of materials. What this has done is it's taken all the panels that we've defined into BombGen. And you can see this is all automatic in our primary structure, main components, whole laminate, okay, forward bottom, forward top sides. So these are automatic. If we need to add tapes or any manual elements, we can right click on a topology group, create a surface element, so this is straight from laminar space. We can create a beam, so anything that we've defined, defined in section space, we can bring in any bondings uh, between panels and beams or panels and bulkheads, etc. We can create these and a reinforcement. So let's create a reinforcement in the four top sides. Let's say this is top sides tapes. Length, 1,000 millimeters. And there's going to be one on both sides of the boat, so let's go to the two. This will open an edit window where we can edit and add any plies, cores, fillets, any uh, adhesives that we need to. So let's say we've got five tapes width of 100 millimeters, add this in. And then we can add a comment to each of these as we need to. Let's see how close. So this is being added to the bomb. Composite takes this all together and then we can export a, a laminate table or a report. So let me show you a laminate table. You can either do this for the whole boat or you can do this for an individual product, project. So let's take it forward bottom laminate table. Hmm. Not quite sure why it's not working. And we have a similar to the laminate table we, uh, we exported previously containing the details of each of the laminates. Yeah. So, yeah, apologies for the inconvenience. But let's move on. Okay. So, once we've got that, we can create uh, yacht scan reports. So, for example, we have a 45-foot ISO report here. We can export this to an HTML. And again, same as Lambda Space Report, we can just share this with our client. And this will give us all the information um, for you to be able to certify your boat with all the materials, all the laminates, etc. Similarly, we can create a bomb gen report. We have one. We don't have one. So let's create one. Uh, 35 foot sail vessel. All components with cost. Okay. So again, this is generating all the data, creating the port for us on our chosen template. In report space, um, we do supply a number of uh, predefined reports that you can decide from, so for the bill of material, 
laminate sections and your scant, but you're also able to uh, modify those and create your own templates um, according to your needs. So you can add or uh, remove information as uh, as needed. Okay. As you can see, there's quite a lot of data because it's a whole 45 foot yacht. This may take maybe 30, 30 seconds to create. There we go. Okay, so again, export to an HTML or PDF. And this will give us all of the weight quantities, including any usage and wastage factors. So any factors that we need to add on to with um, maybe trimming, trimming bulkheads, um, any resin absorption we have in cores, etc. And this is all defined by Composite. Um, but you can create your own bomb settings if you if you need to. Okay. So, jump back in the presentation. So you can see that these inputs are pretty defined for each product. We don't have to go and define them again if we need to do um, if we need to analyze it in scantling or do some detailed design. And this is really shown in the next part. So this is a midship section analysis. All your designers do this. We need to check the global bending strength of our vessel. So we have our vessel here. We have our midship section in, in the red. There. We already have our materials, our laminates defined. We can import the geometry. So in this example, I've taken a section using 3D CAD. And I've imported this using a DXF. I can then assign my laminates, which have already been created, and then design with the number of reinforcements that I need. And now I optimize again, so very quickly optimizing using laminate space and section space. Again, automatically updating. So let's jump into section space. Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard and we'll jump into section space. And this is our midship section. So this is our, our Unity editor, editor. This is what we use in FE space and section space. You can see that we have our geometry here. So I've got one element here, which is the whole top sides. You can see the line that it's taken, or the, the sections that it's taken, and the stack that I've applied, which has been imported straight from laminate space. So I have, still have to create uh, my deck laminates. So if I create a layered section element, take my geometry in. So my geometry is now been taken. I can define the stack. So I can either create a stack up using materials from CMDB, or I can bring in that laminar family that we created earlier straight in. So deck laminate, and let's say it's with the reinforcements. Okay, so we have our laminate family here. Okay. There we can see. We can untick plies if we need to, so I can re remove the reinforcement and not analyze it. I want it in for now. Okay, so let's save and close this. We then need to apply loads to it. So we can apply a manual load if we have a bending moment that we need to apply, bending moment and shear force, or we can generate an allowable load. So let's generate an allowable load. So I want to know my bending moment capacity. And it will calculate it automatically. It's 5,247 kilometers. So very quickly allow me to just have a look see the capacity of my of my um, hub. We can also just have a look at the section properties. So if I calculate my section properties, we can export these to Excel if we need to. These are our eyes, our EIs, our shear section shear properties, etc. And then if I work on the spreadsheet, export to Excel. 
and it will download. Okay. So a very quick check it took me no longer than ten minutes to create. So a pretty vital check, I reckon, in in uh, in terms of designing the boat. Okay. So this is more detailed design. Um, this again goes with the bill of materials generation. We can generate a bill of materials automatically from from our design. For this example, we've taken a bulkhead. So, as usual, we have our materials, our laminates already defined. We then import the geometry. We can create it automatic. Uh, we can create it manually, or we can import it as a DXF. We can import it as a step, or we can import geometry as a template. So we can create um, error fold sections. We can create automatic curved and flat panels, and apply pressures using our template tools. But for this example, we used a step file. We then assign the laminates to our geometry. Optimize it as usual. We've got to make it light. Got to make it stiff, and then this will automatically update downstream when we when we update our laminates, and then documentation. So in this example, this is our bomb. Okay. So composite. Let's come to our dashboard. I don't want to save this. Okay. So fe space. You can see that I've got a couple of couple of examples. This is my bulkhead. Okay, so this is our 3D environment. You can see that here is my my geometry. And what I can do is I can mesh the geometry. So what I've done is we've got um, tapes and patches all over this bulkhead. I've used the rules and orientation sets to define these. So for example, in my bulkhead, my basic bulkhead laminates, I have some port, port side top tapes. And you can see that they're across here along the top. I have some side tapes as well. These are defined using the orientation of this line here. And we can really play around with this. So it's quite a versatile software. And of course, we have our basic bulkhead laminate like this. So you can define each, each surface to a different laminate, or you can choose multiple surfaces to create one shell. And all of this should be, should be uh, enough for you to carry out your detailed design. Okay, so I have a basic load case, which is a mass compression. It's just simply supported at the edges and a mass compression load. Um, this is a kill stepped mass frame. Okay, so let's calculate this. So what it does now is it sends it off to the server. So it'll be in bulkheads, bulkhead C, it's my master bulkhead. So I have my task here. So it sent it off to the server. And it's solving, it took eight seconds to solve. And then I can then grab that result just by clicking on it and have a look at the results of my bulkhead. So this, this model probably took me about half an hour, 45 minutes to create, mesh, and get some results out of. So you can see my displacement results. I can just have a look at the strains for each, each of my elements. So just for, for all of my elements. Or if I just want a really generic view, just want to do a quick strength check, I can create reserve factor results. So let's calculate these. And then you can filter these results into either minimum, uh, resin shear, fiber, fiber failure. So let's go fiber failure. You can see that I'm pretty critical around these areas here. Okay. Composite um, is really versatile, so you can create grillages from this. 
uh, where you can create, uh, or sorry, add, add loads, line loads, surface loads, acceleration loads um, to any panels, beams, um, complex models such as this bulkhead. Okay, so we need to create a bond for this now. So let's save the model. Composite will take uh, your latest mesh, so the laminates that I've created here, as long as this, this is the latest mesh, it will take all these laminates, their areas and their weights into BombGen. So let's jump into BombGen. And this is this SS Composite. It's just refreshing the data, bringing it all in. And then this, uh, let's go to the folder. Okay, so for our bulkhead, we can see the weight estimate, the amount of plies that we need, so 156 kilos, and all the details that we need. So you can see the bulkhead is actually 47 kilos, uh, the capping for the bulkhead is 6, six kilos. And um, then we can export this straight into Excel, copy and paste this into a laminate table. Uh, sorry, into, a, into an engineering drawing like we have done here. So this is a typical output for a bulkhead. We've got our tapes here, a uh, section, and we've got our laminate table. So the laminate table was automatically created. All I had to do was add a few notes just for the builders to understand where the patches were and the orientation and how many of them were. So that really saves you quite a lot of time. Okay, so you don't have to do a bulkhead design all in shells. You can create a frame model. As you can see here, this was about 116 foot boat. Same process, we have our materials, we have our laminates defined. We can import the geometry. So as you can see in this example, it's all done with beams. Assign the materials and laminates. Analyze the results, optimize the results automatically update, and then we have our documentation. So, let's say for example we have analysed our boat in, um, in carbon and PVC. We want to know what would be the weight and cost difference if we wanted it in glass and PVC. So here is our basic 45 foot sailing yacht. We have an infused carbon PVC, weighs one and a half tons and costs about 40,000 euros. Composites can then be used to, um, to replace materials, so our basic steps through that would be duplicate the project and then replace the materials, which is a right click um, and direct replacement for each plies. It will keep the same orientation. We then optimize the laminate, so based on our stiffnesses and, and, uh, and strengths, we can optimize these, replace the materials, update yacht scant, and then update the FE models, check that that's all okay, pull a refresh on BombGen, and then pull out a new report revision. So it's very, very quick, just to do a quick design iteration. And I did this, it took me uh, probably an hour, and I found out that there was a small increase in weight, so 15% increase in weight, but a 44% reduction in cost. So for an hour's work, preliminary design, pretty useful, I think. Okay, so our project summary. So we've got all of our materials in CMDB. Um, these can then be used in other projects, so you only have to import them once. Uh, we have our laminates, check. We've got our beams, so our, our, either our whole beams or we've got our midsection check. Uh, we've got our scantlings analyzed in your scan, so our panels and beams. We have a bulkhead analyzed in FE space. We can do other panel checks if we need to. We have a bomb and then we've got reports for our scan 
and our billing materials and our laminates and our sections. Okay. So it's all good saying that, but where has it been used? So here are some project examples where we have successful marine projects where we have used Composite. So this is a 116-foot yacht. This is where we analyze the mass structure and keel structure with uh, beams in FE space. So this was the example that, that we had earlier. We have a 100-foot yacht, uh, another example where we used uh, beams for our main sheet bulkhead. This is really, really quite useful tool to do this in. Didn't take a lot of time, just took a few um, optimization loops. And you can see that it took eight seconds for each, each loop of the optimization and calculation. Here is a little bit more detailed. We have a, a shell model for a lifting keel gantry. This was for a 45-foot race yacht. This was uh, keeping it light and stiff as possible. So the optimization levels were, were quite high, just reducing that time. Here is a 16-meter tender. It has 1,500 horsepower uh, below the decks. And we analyzed the, the engine grillage using, using FE space as you can see here. And then here is for a 75, 76 foot sailing yacht. This was just to check on the, the buckling strength of the, the area around the deck and the shrouds. So we just wanted a, a little bit more detailed verification and really didn't really want to go into detailed FEA for this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. So, um, we probably still have about 12, um, 10, 12 minutes left for, for this webinar. Uh, let's just try to have a quick summary of uh, what we've seen today. Um, we think that by using Composite, um, you can achieve tangible benefits such as an improved efficiency within your design workflows and operation. Um, you've seen there is a tight integration between between the different modules and that allows you to minimize errors and uh, uh, transfers of data from one spreadsheet to another one uh, or in and out of, of your CAD system. Uh, the software is accessible through any web browser. Um, it is extremely scalable. We have uh, dedicated hosting and, uh, and uh, secure backup servers, redundancy in uh, in the data for both the designs, the tasks, and the databases. So uh, uh, there's probably 99.9% uh, availability guaranteed. Uh, but what it means is that it is a software that can work very well from a single design engineer or an independent designer up to a um, global engineering team uh, with offices in New Zealand, uh, Netherlands, and US, for example. Um, so you can have all the different members collaborate on, on similar projects while using a centralized um, database for the, for the materials or, um, or even using standard reporting um, formats. Um, hopefully this results in, uh, in days, um, saving of days of engineering resources. Um, we, we do believe that through applications of Composite, you can uh, most likely save 30 to 40 percent of the um, the normal design time taken in uh, in similar uh, similar applications, while also improving the quality and the consistency of your deliverables. Um, I think is is essential uh, that the materials data is managed properly. Um, so your materials and ply have well-defined properties you're well aware of, uh, and those are controlled centrally to avoid that mistakes um, comes up down the line towards the end of the project, which will be uh, very, very expensive. Um, but also this idea of um, having this central standard reports, make sure that whenever you look at a report, you know exactly what you're looking at, you know where you uh, you need to look. So being familiar with one single report helps you to uh, uh, quickly identify um, any potential issues. 
and ultimately that would result in reduced uh, project costs. Um, you can see in uh, in the following slide um, the type of um, fees we um, we are talking about for for composite. Uh, but keep in mind that um, the the um, materials database management, the laminates, the section modeling, is something that even for um, for, a, for a very small design office uh, can save uh, days and days of um, outsourcing in. Um, in a week or, or a month, so making it uh, really convenient. So Composite is uh, well. For the first thing, we have um, we have a thirty days uh, free trial. Um, so we do invite anyone who has uh, not yet tried um, to just go on to the Composite uh, website. Uh, there are no limitation in trials. Is is uh, you get access to all the softwares. Uh, please do let us know if you need the yacht scan, um, as this needs to be activated manually. But otherwise, is is free. Uh, you just need your email. Uh, not even need to put a credit card detail in. We support up to five users, um, and uh, you can roughly replicate um, quite a few projects within um, within the allowance of the trial uh, and the thirty days. Um, Alternatively, there are uh, subscription models, so you can either opt for a monthly basis or uh, an annual basis. Um, going annual will save you two months of the subscription. Um, and those are divided into basically the number of um, design cases that are evaluated or units consumption. Um, a C1000 is our entry level one. Um, as you can see, it's 250 euros a month uh, plus 54 yachts count. But basically allows you to um, to use the software continuously throughout the month for let's say two to maximum three designers. Um, but while larger engineering teams can opt for a um, higher subscription level, uh, we're probably talking about around ten designers working uh, permanently on the software throughout uh, throughout the monthly period. Okay, so uh, I've seen a few questions um, coming up during the um, during the webinar already. Uh, if there are some more, please do not hesitate to uh, to type them in. That's on the right hand side of your screen, um, questions panel, and uh, we'll be um, even though we, we may not reply to everything today, we'll get back to you uh, very quickly uh, after the webinar with uh, with the answer as uh, as needed. Um, okay, so there is uh, there was a first question in regards to the other rules such as uh, DNV or BV rules. Um, what we can do is actually we had a very quick uh, tool set up into the um, into this go to webinar, uh, which allows us to just gather a little bit of a quick feedback. Uh, particularly in regards to uh, what are the certifications that you seek for your projects. Um, so we're going to just run this one for, uh, for a few minutes. Um, just as a note, the ones that apply to, to your activities. Okay. A few people requested um, examples of the files we sent, um, the, the laminate report or the, uh, or the bill of material. Um, so what we will do is uh, we'll share the uh, we'll share the files with the recording of the webinars. Uh, I think in coming day or or two, um, hopefully by tomorrow evening. Um, so you'll be able to download the uh, the PDFs that, that we showed you. So the sections and the bill of materials um, to have an idea of uh, what type of data we include uh, we include in that. Uh, there was a question also in regard of the uh, backing analysis or model analysis, and uh, perhaps John is more <laughs> entitled to answer that. Yes, so in FE space we can handle um, we can handle linear static, we can handle buckling analysis, and we can handle um, modal analysis. We quite we use buckling analysis quite a lot. Uh, for panels on wind turbine blades, just for a, a, a good quick check um, for panels and beams. Uh, the same for natural frequencies and um, and um, yeah, linear static. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think there is another one for you, John, and uh, let us um, close the pool for now. I think that's been enough. Um, th there is a question about the um, unfactured. Um, what does it refer to um, on the design pressure? It was within the, uh, the initial reports that came in quite early into the design phase. Um, Okay, so I think we're looking at into a panel loads. So it's these um, design loads that I think we're talking about. These are just the basic pressure loads and the reactions for on a panel. The fact of design loads take into account any uh, partial factors that we have um, on on materials. And there's a little bit of description in either the tech docs and there's there's some a description here. So it's basically just just the uh, material partial factors. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a question about uh, motor use applications. I think we. Uh, it's true, we haven't covered it today, but basically from the, uh, if we just go back to Composite, you'll see whenever you enter Yacht's Count, uh, there was a drop-down menu, um, so if we create a new vessel, um, ISO or GL, we can decide the, the craft type. So, um, although we haven't covered, you can actually do expect uh, the same level of, uh, of um, comprehensive tools uh, for the, um, for the motorboats. And uh, let's see. okay, there was a question about I think custom factors or in general custom uh, or or user specified failure settings and, and things like that. Ah uh, yes. So when when you come into a project, you generally have company specific um, safety factors. So. Uh, from working to ultimate, from working to limit, we can define these per project. So for our example projects, we can go into safety factors and we can either use our, our safety factors, our ultimate limit state by default is 3, our fatigue is 1 and our serviceability is 1.5. We can create these and uh, let's say we wanted to work with 2.7 and then we want our global pass factor to be 1.15 or something. If we save this, this would then be uh, this would then be propagated throughout the project or all of our analysis. So if we then calculate again, okay, they're all passing, but um, yeah. So we can set our safety factors per project or product as we as we need to. There is a inheritance type of uh, um, I can say level uh, that is um, handled in composite, so you can have company specific settings, uh, bit of material specific settings. So we we have a number of settings that are applied for um, your company um, only. Um, you can then define or tweak them or change them uh, per project or uh, per product as well. So that really gives you the flexibility to work with uh, multiple failure settings uh, or multiple system um, according to where your clients are or the activity you're doing. Uh, from our side, we we do a lot of marine, uh, but not only. Um, so we find it quite um, quite useful to be able to use uh, different settings according to the different industry we we, we are serving really. Okay, I think we yes we're coming to the um, to the end of the presentation today. Um, so upcoming uh, webinars and events for this last minute. So in uh, we'll actually be releasing uh, we released two point seven about ten days ago. Um, we are releasing two point eight in in a few days again. Um, so that's uh, a rapid uh, turnaround with our uh, new product releases. 
Uh, the focus is 2.8 is an add-on to the um, composite material database with an inclusion of um, data, so a full library of in excess 1,200 materials and plies um, that will be containing full um, mechanical properties and physical properties for the materials. It's not just composites, uh, we also include metals, woods and plastics, although the majority is composites to be honest. Uh, but those are quite useful if you're using some um, some comparison, or uh, you know, you may be using other uh, non-composite materials in, in some of the projects or the applications. So on 3rd of March, um, that's Thursday, uh, same time, well in a week time really, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be presenting uh, this um, this add-on to uh, to the material database. Otherwise, if you're attending JC World in Paris. Uh, from the 8th to the 10th of March, we are in Hall 5A, um, Sun or Roof C56. Uh, is within the Composite UK um, environment, so uh, I would be happy to um, to meet you there. Um, if you are in the region but do not have your ticket, uh, please do write to us. Uh, we have a few invitations left, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure how many, but we still still have uh, three or four or five, I think, um, remaining. Um, so we'll be happy to extend that um, entry ticket um, to you, obviously saving again a bit of um, a bit of money. Okay, so thank you for for your attention today. Um, we'll uh, we'll probably send the link to the recorded version in case you missed some of the parts. I would like to review something. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, beginning of next week, alongside with as I said, the files, uh, bomb gen section space um, reports, laminate. Um, reports. Um, if you have further questions, please uh, write to us, support at composite.com or info at composite.com. We'll be happy to answer your queries. Um, otherwise, you know, feel free to give Composite a go. Uh, we three 30 days. Uh, that could be quite a bit of a project coming up. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you again for your time today. Goodbye.